Good evening today, class. Today we are going to be talking about the basic ion interactions. And uh, what does that mean? Well, last class we talked about what an ion was. And an ion is what? Answer that question. That's right, an ion is a charged particle. So, What's a charged particle? A charged particle is something that has a plus or a minus charge. Now, the charged particle, when we're talking about an atom, it's something where the number of protons are not equal to the number of electrons. There's a difference in the charges. There's either more protons, which would make the atom or ion positive, and if there's more electrons, then the um, atom or ion would be negative. So what we're gonna be talking about are these interactions um, between the ions. So these ions, these plus and minus charges, they're gonna be interacting with each other, which means they're gonna be getting together and some of them are gonna be not getting together. But we're gonna find out what happens when you put plus charges and minus charges uh, in the same area. So that's what we'll be talking about today. So um, let's start off today with a warm-up. So our warm-up today, which is gonna review what we did last class, it says write the ion symbol for the atom that has 13 protons and 10 electrons. Now, there's only one question here. All we have to do is write the ion symbol. When we see the word ion, what are we gonna think? We're gonna think charged particle. We're talking protons and electrons are gonna give our atom its charge, which turns that atom into what's called an ion. So let's figure out what ion we're talking about. Well, we have 13 protons and 10 electrons. We're gonna need our periodic table. And if we take a look at our periodic table, what element has 13 protons? Good. All right, aluminum, ladies and gentlemen, has 13 protons, right? And there are our 13 protons right there. So it says write the ion symbol. Well, right, in, right away, we know that the symbol is gonna be aluminum. So let's write aluminum, because we know that the symbol will be aluminum. But now we have to write something in this corner right here right? Because this corner is where we have the charge. Now, last time over on this side, we had to write the mass over on the far left-hand side. So the charge went over on the right-hand side and the mass went over on the left-hand side. So this is where we're going to put our charge today. Now, what's the charge going to be? Well, we have 13 protons and we have 10 electrons. So we have more protons than electrons. So here's my next question. Do you think that aluminum is gonna have a positive charge or a negative charge if there's more protons? Good, okay, so let's find out. Remember that the formula or the, the way to, to find the charge, the charge on an atom equals the number of protons minus the number of electrons, and that will give us the charge that will go on our atom. So let's work that out now. So the number of protons is 13. The number of electrons is 10, and 13 minus 10 equals three. Now this is a positive number, just because there's a, the, the larger number is positive here. All right, so this is that's gonna be the charge. So the charge equals three. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna write three plus. Now, this would be our answer. We'll put, always put a box around our answer. There it is. Now, if you write aluminum like this, aluminum, and you put a plus three, we're gonna mark that wrong. So do not put a plus three. We want you to put a three plus. All right, so this would be the charge on an ion that has 13 protons and 10 electrons. That's it right there. Perfect, okay. 
Let's go next. So let's do another example. Our next example says, how many protons and how many electrons does AU4 plus have? Now, you probably don't know what AU is, but AU is the symbol for gold, okay? And we'll find that. This question, there's two questions. The first one is, how many protons are there? And the second one is, how many electrons are there? So we'll answer both of those questions. So can we figure out how many protons gold has? Yeah, we just have to find gold. So let's come over into our periodic table and let's look for gold. We're gonna have to look all over for it. And sure enough, gold is right here. Element number, ooh, that's a messy box. Element number 79. And what is the number of protons that gold has? Good, gold has 79 protons. So we know that gold has 79 protons. And now all we have to do is figure out the number of electrons. So that's answer number one. And then answer um, number two, let's find the electrons. Hmm, how do we do that? Well, I know there was a formula that says that the charge equals the number of protons minus the number of electrons. Well, do we know any of these already? Yes, we know two out of the three, which will always allow us to answer a mathematical equation. So the charge equals plus four, and that's gonna equal the number of protons, 79, minus the number of electrons, which we don't know. So let's solve for E. Let's get E all by itself. And since this is a subtraction problem, and our addition and subtraction, we can add or subtract to get things to the other side. So in this case, we'll subtract 79 from both sides. So that's zero. And whatever we do to the left side, we can do to the right side. Take out your calculators and you'll say, well, 79 minus 79 is zero. 79 a minus plus four or 79 minus four is gonna be 75. Since the 79 is larger, this number will be negative. And that's gonna equal a minus E, right? So 75 electrons. Now we're gonna get rid of this negative here and that negative there by multiplying each side by negative one. So the number of electrons equals 75 electrons. And that's how we know how many electrons we have. Does this make sense? Absolutely it makes sense. Why does it make sense? Well, if we have a four plus charge, that means we must have four more protons than we have electrons. Do we have four more plus charges right here? Then we have negative charges? Yes, we do. We have 79 protons and 70 five electrons. And so that is, um, that would be the number of protons and electrons that we have. Okay, so now let's take a look. Let's take a look at a little bit more of what's going to be happening today. So what we have here this says that atoms and molecules, they like to be neutral and have no charge. What does this mean? Well, neutral means having no charge, so being zero. So it's not a positive number and it's not a negative number. It's neutral, it's zero. And that means to have no charge. So there's gonna be no positives and there are gonna be no negatives, right? So atoms like to have a neutral charge. Yes, sometimes they, they have a charge, but they prefer to have no charge at all. So um, there are a couple of rules for interactions. So let's take a look at a couple of rules for ion interactions. Number one, opposites attract. and like charges repel. You probably know that Paula Abdul song from long ago that opposites attract, it's probably still on the top 100 billboard, but 
what does it mean to be opposite to attract? Well, an opposite would be you have a positive charge and you have a negative charge and those charges attract towards each other. They go towards each other, they love each other. So the negative needs the positive and the positive needs the negative. Repelling occurs when you have like charges. So what would be, whoops, what would be um, a, a like charge? You'd have a negative with a negative. So if you have a negative charge and a negative charge, those charges are going to repel each other. They're actually gonna force away from each other, kind of like when you have a magnet and you have two sides of a magnet that are the same, you can't force them together. Same thing with positive and a positive. So if you have two positive charges, those are also going to repel each other. So opposite charges will attract to each other. There's gonna be a balance. So when you have a positive and you have a negative, those charges are gonna cancel each other out. They're gonna balance so that the overall charge goes to neutral, goes to a zero charge, okay? So zero equals neutral, okay? So all of these molecules and atoms wanna have a zero charge. For example, if there's a plus two charge, right? This plus two charge wants to be canceled out by a minus two charge. So if there's a minus two charge, these two, the plus and the minus will be attracted to each other. And that plus two and that minus two will give an overall charge of zero or neutral when they come together. Right now, if we take a look at something that's like maybe a positive two and another positive two, why won't these come together? Well, because if these will not come together, because if they did come together, then a plus two and a plus two is going from a plus two to a plus four. And that plus four is further away from zero. And remember, the atoms wanna to go towards neutral. So if the atom's positive, it wants to pick up negatives. If the atom or molecule is negative, that molecule or atom are gonna to wanna to pick up positives. And so this is not gonna happen because we're getting further and further from zero instead of going towards zero. And that's what this says. Ions of opposite charges will react together to neutralize. And neutralize means to cancel out until you have a charge of zero. And that's the key to so much in chemistry is neutralization of charges. So let's take a quick look. I'll ask you a couple of questions. Now at this juncture, um, this is everything you need for today's understandings to get you through today's lessons. So let me move on to a couple of uh, questions for us. It's gonna get us started. So let's do, let's do some examples. So hopefully you have your notes right there. You'll need your notes. So our first example says, how would lithium react with hydrogen? So how would lithium react with hydrogen. Now, what's the first thing you notice about these? Well, you notice that this is a plus charge and that's a plus charge. So we have lithium, which is a positive charge, positive, and you have hydrogen, which is also a positive charge. And if we think back to our notes, what did we say? We said what? Opposites do what? Opposites, I think we said they attract. And we said that similar, right? Or the same, what do they do? They repel. So we wanna look and say, well, are the charges here, this lithium plus and that hydrogen plus, 
are those the same charges? Yes, they are. So this atom right here, that high, or this ion, and the lithium ion, they are going to go in opposite directions of each other. Because these are gonna be, if they went together, this would be a plus one and a plus one would go to plus two. And no, we wanna neutralize. So plus charges, they repel, right? So let's take a look at number two. We have aluminum ion and we have a neon atom. Notice there's no charge on the neon. That's a neutral atom. So we have aluminum three plus, which is a positive. And we have a neon atom, which is neutral. That's not why it's abbreviated, an NE. Okay, but neon is neutral. And what's gonna happen are these opposites. Well, it says opposites attract, and it says similar things repel, but in this case, neon, since it's not a charged atom, this is what's called a noble gas. If it comes in contact, if, if there's a reaction with a noble gas, a neutral atom, there will be no reaction occurring. So in this case, there's gonna be no reaction. And in the last case that we have down here, we have calcium, and calcium is a plus two. So we have calcium is a plus two with sulfur, which is a two minus, and this is a positive, and this is a negative. And if we take a look up at our notes up, up at the top here, we can see that opposite charges are gonna attract. So in this case, this sulfur, and this calcium, they're going to attract to each other and they're gonna to wanna to get together. So in this case, these ions are going to attract together, okay? So that's pretty much all I'd be asking you is, um, how do these react? So if I ask how do they react, you would say, well, they don't react, they repel. There is no reaction because there's no positive or negative or they're attracted to each other. So let's move on to some other questions. So now let's take a look at number four. So let's take a look at um, number four again. So, the question here says, how would magnesium two plus magnesium ion react with a chloride ion? So this is the first question. There's two questions here. So this is question number one. And then it asks, how many of each ion is needed to neutralize the charges? So this is question number two. So we need to be reading our questions and making sure that we answer both of these questions. So how would magnesium plus two, react with chloride or Cl minus. Well, are the charges opposites? Yes, there's a plus two and a minus one. So for question number one, the answer would be they attract. So there's the answer to number one. The, atom, or the atoms or ions, they attract to each other. Now let's take a look at question number two. Now question number two asks, how many of each ion is needed to neutralize the charges of the other? So let's write down the first one. So let's take a look. So we're gonna write down, we have magnesium two plus, and we have chloride minus one. Now, when we end up, when we end up putting these together, we want to neutralize or come up with an overall charge of zero. Well, if we just put a plus two and a minus one together right here, are we gonna come up with a charge of zero, ladies and gentlemen? No, we're not going to. We're gonna come up with a charge of plus one. And plus one doesn't get us quite to zero if we put these two together. So let's see if, oh, if we can. Um, figure this out. So what are we going to do? Let's just make a little chart here. So right now, this side, we have 
a plus two charge. And this side, we have a minus one charge. And these do not balance out to get us to zero. So what would I need in order to balance this out to zero? Because right now we have an extra plus charge. Okay, let's see if you work that out properly. So we have this right here. Right now we have a minus one, but we don't want a minus one. In order to cancel that out, we're gonna want a plus, a minus two. So we're gonna need another chlorine ion, and that's gonna give us a minus one. Because remember, if we put a minus charge, that's the same as saying minus one, all right? So a minus and a minus is gonna give us a minus two charge, and a minus two and a plus two are gonna cancel out. So what did we need to cancel out the charges? Well, we had a plus two magnesium charge and a minus one on each chlorine. And so we would end up with, let me get rid of that one so it doesn't confuse you, two, whoops, let me get rid of that. Sorry about that. Too many twos there. So number two, we would have one magnesium, two plus, and we had one, two chlorides. Cl minuses, and this would be our answer to part number two, all right? Now, very quickly, what um, sometimes we'll also show is we'll show a balance beam, all right? And we'll show it right here. Magnesiums come in packets of two plus, and chlorines come in packets of minus one, and we wanna balance this thing out to zero. Are we balanced on our balance beam, on our seesaw? Are we balanced out at zero? Nope, we've got a plus two charge on this side over here and a minus one on this side. So what are we gonna have to do? We would need another minus one, and there it is. And that's why we'd have two balancing out our one. This would be like somebody who's really big like myself, and I would need to have two children like my two kids to balance out the other side because they, have a smaller charge or a smaller amount of weight. So it would take two of my children to balance out one of me because I come in this size. So we'll do some more examples. So let's take a look at some other examples. All right, so the next one says, how would Na plus react with, how would Na plus react with O minus? O2 minus. So right away, we want to say how many of each ion is needed. And so there's two questions. So this is question number one. How would they react? Question number two would be how many of each are needed to neutralize the other? So question number one, what will happen, kids? Will they react? Will they repel? Will they attract? or will there be no reaction? That's right, so on this one, they're going to, oopsies, attract because there's a positive and a negative, okay? So now let's go to question number two, which is similar for above. How many of each ion is needed to neutralize the charges? Well, we're gonna draw this up the same as the other one. Here we have, an Na with a plus one charge. So this sodium weighs plus one. And then we have this oxygen ion known as oxide. Each one of these weigh minus two, and we wanna balance these out. So how would we do it? Well, let's take a look. This side over here right now is a plus one. This side over here is a minus two. Are these two balanced out to get us to zero? No, these are not balanced charges. They're not opposite charges so that they cancel each other out. So what are we gonna need more of? Good, we're gonna need more of the smaller charge because obviously if we put more of these, it'd go to minus four. So let's take a look. So what we wanna do, let's get rid of that number there because we don't want plus one, right? So what we're gonna need is another sodium ion. And now on this side, 
we have a plus one and a plus one, which is going to give us an overall plus two charge. This is a minus two charge and a minus two charge. These two charges are balanced. They're going to neutralize each other, right? Because remember, the whole point is to neutralize or make them neutral. So our answer here is going to be very straightforward. We have two sodiums. And don't sit there and say, nah, we have two sodiums, ladies and gentlemen. All right? And we have one oxygen. Now, when I write oxygens, I normally put like a little curly cue on the top so that we can tell the difference between an oxygen and uh, the number zero. So this would be the answer. Get my two minus there, it's wrong. This would be the answers to number one and the answer to number two. All right, so let's do another example. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. Too far. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so let's take a look at number six. So here we are, number six. So this one says, how would iron three plus or Fe three plus react with oxide or oxygen two minus? Right? So how would they react? And how many of each ion is needed? The same question as before. So we have question number one and question number two. So question number one says, how would they react? Well, you have a positive and you have a negative, so they would attract with each other, wouldn't they? All right, so let's go to question number two. Now, this one might look a little bit more complicated, and it might be, it depends on how how sometimes your math skills, people look and just go, oh, they can see the answers. So let's see how many of each we need. So we have Fe3 plus, and we have O2 minus. So it's an oxygen. Now, how are we going to balance these out? Well, the iron, these come in packets of three. The oxygens come in packets of two. So the question is, how many of each will we need? So let's draw this out right here. There we have our oxygen. And remember, what do we want to happen at the end? We want these things to come out to zero. So whatever number we have here and whatever number we have here need to be the same number but opposite charge. This will be a plus something and that'll be a minus something. Now, some of you might already be able to see how many of each we would need based on these numbers up here at the top. But let's take a look. So we have Fe3 plus and we want to balance out those charges with the oxygen. Now, we can only add oxygens with two minuses. We can't say, oh, let's, let's just put a minus one charge. Sorry, oxygens don't come in minus one charges, guys. It comes in minus two packets. So you can only add minus two packets. Well, the number three is bigger. And the number two is smaller. So this electrical energy. So let's add another oxide right here. And now at this juncture, we have a what? A minus four balancing with a plus three. Are those balanced? No, that comes out to a, a negative one charge. So what are we gonna have to do? Well, we're gonna have to get these charges balanced. So since this side is larger, let's add another iron. And we can only add an iron with a three plus charge. So we no longer have a three plus charge over here. Now we have a plus six. Do these balance out? No, we have a plus six and a minus four. So what can we do to get these to charge and balance out? We can add another oxide. And in adding another oxide, that's going to give us a minus six. And sure enough, we neutralized each other by taking two iron threes and three of those oxides, a plus six and a minus six. So our answer would be we needed two iron three plus charges, and we needed three oxygen with a two minus charge. So very quickly, I'm gonna show you the balancing act again. Let's just imagine that we have Mr. Pepic sitting here at a three plus charge. Okay, I weigh 300 or whatever, and we have to balance this thing out. And you have my, my, my child who comes in at a 
a 200, right? So how do we balance it out? Well, we would have to have three of these little kids weighing two each, right? And two adults to balance out the plus six and the minus six. So it's kind of like a little balancing act. It would be two irons would be able to cancel out three oxygens. So let's take a look at number seven. Number seven, it's very similar, but a little different. So number seven says, how would copper with a two plus charge react with nitride or nitrogen with a three minus charge? And then what and how many of each would we need so that neutralizing occurs? Well, question number one, there's question number two. So question number one, what would happen? They would attract, exactly. Question number two, it's gonna be very similar to the last one. We have a copper with a two plus charge. We have a nitrogen with a three minus charge. And we wanna get these things to balance out, neutralize down to zero. So whatever charge I have here has to be the same and opposite charge there, so they balance. Well, there's a plus two and a minus three, so right now we have a plus two charge and a minus three charge, those are not balanced. So let's see if we can add another Cu2 plus. Now we have a plus four charge. Are those balanced? No, those are not balanced. So let's see if we can add another nitrogen and then we see that's gonna be six, so we have a minus six charge. Nope, those aren't balanced. Let's add another copper. Yep, and there we are. Plus six on this side with a minus six on this side, they're balanced. So you'd need three copper two pluses for every two nitrogens. Now these are just ratios of each other and you're gonna get better and I'll teach you some shortcuts eventually on how to um, find some shortcuts. So the next one I want you to try by yourself. Let's see if you can try this next one by yourself. This one says, how many magnesium two pluses would react with S2 minus? So why don't you see if you can work that out? Well, are they opposites? Yes. So question number one, they attract. Question number two, we want to look and say, how many of each would we need? Well, let's draw it out. We have a magnesium with a two plus charge. And we have a sulfur with a two minus charge. And we want to come out here and make sure that all of those neutralize each other. So what do we have here so far? We've got a plus two and here we've got a two minus and oh my gosh, they already are balanced. So if we were going to put this on a balance beam, there'd be a two plus over here. There'd be a two minus over here, or minus two, and the balance beam is balanced. So neutralize is perfect. So you would just see, you'd need one magnesium ion and one sulfur ion, all right? Sorry for my mess in this. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'll be sitting right here with you. Uh, so if you have any questions, please um, let me know. Just a couple of reminders. If you are given um, uh, an, an iron with a three plus charge, you cannot just say, you know what, since I need a plus four, I'm just gonna make it a plus one charge. You cannot do that. You have to only add iron three pluses if that's what's given. Like in this example, that's a magnesium two plus which means you can only add magnesium two pluses. You can't go saying, oh, I need a, a three plus, so I'll make it a magnesium three plus. That just doesn't work. So not possible. So um, make sure that uh, you just follow these procedures. Um, we're working with ions. You're paying attention to these. And just a reminder that that's the difference between the number of protons and electrons and all of this is going to start coming together in the next two classes and this is just a foundation so good luck i'm sitting right here if you need me and um let me know if you have any questions okay good luck